Hello everyone, it's Jim Nix. Hope you're having a good day. I am working on a photo and I am working specifically on the tone curve or the curves filter in Luminar. It's super powerful and uh, I love it, but my suspicion is that a lot of people don't use it because it's, it's kind of scary. It's not like a slider like a lot of them where you just drag something to the right to get more and to the left to get less. It's a bit more complicated. It takes a lot of practice getting sort of used to it. And we're gonna talk about that today. So you go in here, add a filter, grab curves. Uh, in Lightroom and Photoshop, it's known as the tone curve, but it's, uh, it's curves here. Same difference, right? Anyway, it has this line, it's sort of got a built-in histogram behind it. And effectively what this does is it represents the tonal ranges in the uh, entire photo. So there's four different tabs. There's RGB, which is the uh, sort of the combination of all of it, the tonal range in the photo. And then you got red and green and blue individually. And if you notice, the line is of a different color each time. And those uh, are great ways you can change contrast and, and up or uh, you know increase or decrease those colors in the photo. So what people often do, by the way, the further you go up here, the brighter it gets, and the further you come down this way, the darker it gets. So let me show you. Uh, I'm on the highlights end, so you see that's white, and that's gray, and that's black. So that white represents the highlights, and that's midtones, and that's shadows. Same way the histogram works, right? You see the histogram sort of in the background. So if I take the highlights and go this way, you can see I'm sort of darkening the highlights. In other words, I'm using the tone curve to accomplish what I would otherwise do with the polarizing filter, right? So that's how you can use it there. Shadows, you could come here and say, I wanna darken the shadows. That gets a little overdone. We could say, hey, I wanna go this way and kinda of lighten the shadows. And if you look at that, it looks like I'm adding a little bit of fog or uh, sort of decontrasting the image, which is a great way to start creating vintage effects, uh, which is something you can easily do with tone curve. I'll cover that in a future video. Let me reset that. What most people do is they'll drop a pinpoint there, kind of in the higher end of the midtones, and one here, kind of in the higher end of the shadows, and then drag that down and drag that up and create what's called an S curve. It's a gentle curve, kind of like the shape of the letter S. And let me show you what it did to the photo. There's before, there's the after. It just adds a little bit of extra kick to the photo uh, by changing the contrast and that sort of thing. So that's great, right? But that's not what I would do. I would actually take this photo, I think I would take this down, I want to darken the sky a little bit because it's just too blown out. I think that looks better already, right? There we go, there we go. But what I would do is then I would come over here to the red. So if you look at the red, you start moving these around, and this is the thing to do is just start experimenting. But look at that. I've quickly taken the red, increased the amount of red. Notice that I started up here, which is the highlights uh, of the red because the sky is the brighter part. The sky is where the highlights exist. So what I'm doing is I'm upping the red and the highlights. Now some of it bleeds over here because there's highlights in the water, but I'm not picking up in these posts or in the trees, that sort of thing, right? So you could come over here and say, well, I wanna do more red in the shadows as well, if I could grab that, which I don't wanna do, but again, interesting vintage sort of film look. Uh, or I wanna come over here and say, I wanna go kind of the opposite of red in the uh, in the shadows, I wanna go more blue, right? And so you can create some interesting sort of bicolor toning, which by the way is another filter in Luminar that if you haven't used, I recommend checking out. But you can simulate split toning, bicolor toning, contrast, uh, tone, all sorts of things right here just using the, uh, the curves filter. So I would also maybe come over here to blue and you might notice there's a lot of more blue down here in the shadows. So maybe I wanna take that and say, I'm gonna go away from the blue in the shadows. Whoops, nope, that's adding to it. Sorry, you're going up. This is going away from it. So it goes to the opposite end. That's kind of a washed out sort of look. I don't really like that. So I'm gonna go back this way if I can get my mouse to work. There you go. Maybe add a little bit of blue in the water. I'm gonna go back to the red and I'm gonna go a little more intense. And look at that. Let me show you the before and after. There's the before, straight out of camera, no edits. And there's the after. A stunning looking a golden hour, sunset, pink sort of thing going on here. And all I did is just make a few adjustments. I changed the, uh, I compressed the highlights here. And then I bumped up the red primarily in the highlights. And then I bumped up the, uh, the blue as well. And here you go. With just a few uh, moments of work, I've gone from that to that. And as I said, there's a, so much you can do. I just wanted to cover a couple of basics here, but I highly recommend you get in the, uh, 
the Curves tool, just experiment, get different kinds of photos, drag stuff around, and just start to get accustomed to it because it's very powerful. You could completely edit a photo with just the Curves tool and not really anything else, right? This photo, you could say, hey, that's done because I think it looks great. Let me show you one more time. There's the before and there's the after. Basically, I've taken it from a, a kind of a blue hour shot, turned it into a really a beautiful sunset and just a couple of moments of work in Luminar with the Curves tool. So that's the basics of it. I'll do some more videos about the Curves tool because there's a lot to talk about, but I wanted to see if I can get you willing to experiment. Get your feet wet, dip your toes in the water, whatever you want to call it. Just jack around with the Curves tool. It's non-destructive anyway, right? So just play around, see what you come up with, and have fun out there. Hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. See you next time, folks. Adios.